Hey everyone, I'm Em. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I hope you're having a flare-free day. This channel is all about lifestyle with chronic illnesses as well as living with endometriosis. So if that interests you, then subscribe, ring the bell, like, comment, do all the things. We'd love to have you a part of the channel. On today's episode, I wanna talk about how to prepare for an upcoming doctor's appointment. Now I know that sometimes leading up to a doctor's appointment can be very anxiety inducing and I get a little flustered so I want to make sure that I have everything that I need prior to the actual appointment so that I feel prepared, calm, cool, and collected. So if you're interested in having a checklist for your upcoming appointment on what to bring and how to prepare for that, then just keep on watching. I also have a link in my bio for my free PDF download of the appointment checklist. So you can keep printing it out and use it for any upcoming appointments that you have in your chronic illness journey. Nothing is worse than showing up on the wrong day of your appointment and at the wrong time. So number one is confirm the date and timing of your appointment. Number two is to confirm who you are meeting with during your appointment, whether that be a new doctor that you're meeting with, if it's the same doctor you've been referred to, if it's a nurse, if it's a practitioner of some other kind, you want to make sure that you confirm who you're meeting with so that you can ease some tension and anxiety going into the appointment. It also kind of helps going to the front desk when you check in to say, I'm meeting with this person and you feel a little bit more confident uh, going into the meeting. Number three is to pack your health card or medical card. I do this the night before so that I'm not scrambling in the morning to try and find it. It's gonna be needed at your appointment. It's one of the one the first things that they ask when you show up to the desk. So have it ready and prepared with you. Alongside that, I would also add have any insurance cards or insurance information because they might ask if your insurance covers that certain type of appointment that you're going to. So two things to prepare either the night before or even a couple of days in advance. Number four is to bring your journal. I have this journal and I use it every time to document new symptoms, what may have caused those symptoms, the date and time and hour that they happened, um, and it keeps track of everything for me. So I bring this to the appointment and if my doctor asks, you know, when was your last period, what caused your last symptom, when was the date of a certain thing, I can refer back to this and feel confident in that appointment because I have I have the evidence right here with me. So I highly recommend bringing your journal. A second part I'll say to this is that if you haven't started a journal, I highly recommend that you do in your chronic illness journey. It helps not only with your mental health, with kind of processing emotions around your chronic illness, but also again, keeps track of all your symptoms and things that may be causing or creating flare-ups for your chronic illness. So highly recommend bringing your journal. Number five, it's important to have your current medications on you during your appointment or a list of them with you. Sometimes this can happen if you're meeting with someone new, it's important to know what you're taking, especially if the medical system is down that day, they don't have paper records, you're meeting at a new clinic and the old one hasn't shipped over your information, anything like that. So it's important to have that list and dosage listed on uh, that piece of paper that you bring. I think it's an important thing to also talk about because medications may be interacting with one another. So if you're meeting with your doctor and you're feeling new or different types of symptoms when you first started a medication, they might be able to pinpoint that it's the medication and not necessarily something else happening within your own body. So it's important to have that list going into an appointment. Number six, bring a pen and paper. This kind of goes along with the journal that you can write down symptoms and feelings that you're you're experiencing prior to your appointment but during your appointment you want to have a pen and paper i find that sometimes appointments can be very overwhelming and there's a lot of information that can be thrown at you so having a pen and paper there just to write down notes or to write down key information is very important to have during your appointment number seven it kind of relates to number six with the pen and paper, but if you know that you're not gonna be able to take in information while writing, have someone come with you to your appointment. I find that I bring my mom sometimes or my dad or my partner, just because I know that I'm gonna be wanting to actively listen and not necessarily have the time to write down everything. So the individual coming with you can ask additional questions that you may have forgotten or that they can just write uh, the key information down for you while you communicate with your practitioner. 
Number eight is to have a list of symptoms, both current and recurring symptoms that you're experiencing with your chronic illness. They will definitely ask what symptoms you're experiencing in your appointment, and you don't want to miss anything when you're potentially flustered or anxious during an appointment. So having it written down and prepared the night before is a great way to kind of get ahead of that question. When it comes to endometriosis, adenomyosis, and PCOS symptoms, they will ask how your last period was. So I recommend also remembering when your last period started and ended, as well as the symptoms that associated that last period. Number nine, I highly recommend preparing a list of questions that you want to know the answer to before leaving your appointment, whether it be, is this new medication right for me or is the current dosage appropriate? Is there a specialist that I can talk to and that you can refer me to? Are there more brochures or information about the diagnosis that you gave me? What are the next steps that I have to take in my chronic illness journey? When will I be meeting you next? Will it be you? When are you available? All of these different things, any other questions that you wanna ask in your specific chronic illness journey, write your questions down and make sure that they answer them prior to leaving that appointment to make it a successful meeting for you. Similar to having a list of your symptoms, I recommend for number 10 is to have a list of previous ultrasounds, surgeries, MRIs, medications, x-rays, anything available on you, and the date, time, and potential results that were achieved from those appointments and, uh, and examinations. I think that it's important to have this list. Again, one, if you're miss or meeting a new doctor, two, if you're going to a new location and the previous one hasn't sent over documentation of previous results, and three, it doesn't waste time in your journey. So for me, for instance, I had several ultrasounds conducted prior to meeting with my doctor again, and I had a list of when they had occurred, the date, time, and then they didn't waste any time looking into what the results were. So I highly recommend having that information on you prior to going to your appointment. Number 11, ask for a second opinion if you are not satisfied with the answers or treatment or care that you receive with your medical practitioner. This is okay to do. Getting a second opinion in your chronic illness journey can make or break a diagnosis. Number 12, recap any takeaways from the appointment. It's always a great idea to recap at the end of your appointment to ensure that you both are on the same page as to what the next steps are. I want to remind you that at the end of the day, this is your medical appointment. It's not your doctor's, it's not your partner's, it's not your mom and dad's, it's yours. And I hope that this chronic illness appointment checklist makes you feel a little less alone a little bit more confident and a little bit more prepared going into your medical appointment with your doctor know that you can ask for second opinions you can ask more questions you can write down information you can ask for more research you can ask to be referred to a specialist there are so many avenues that you can make this appointment your own and i hope that this checklist helps in achieving those desired outcomes for you and your unique journey